I want to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. This is my first day training with rings. I've set up a small workspace outside, so I have somewhere to train through the winter, and I've been meaning to give rings training a try for a long, long time now. Today is just a trial run to see how well I manage with each exercise, and the early indication is not very well. I try my hand at chest and tricep exercises first, beginning with dips, then push-ups, and finally some butterflies, with push-ups being the only exercise I was able to complete 10 or more reps. Next, it's upper back and biceps with pull-ups, chin-ups, and this embarrassing disgrace that I thought was gonna be a tucked front lever. <sighs> Let's pay no attention to that. On a straight bar, I can usually get eight reps in a row, sometimes nine. However, doing these same pull-ups on the rings and the best I'm able to get is five. So the easiest way to describe how that just went is every exercise doubled in difficulty. If I could normally do 12 pull-ups in a row, I was down to six. If I could do 20 dips, I was down to 10. There was so much more energy being used to just stabilize myself. All these supporting muscles that were engaged and activated that were just significantly weaker than I was expecting. So I think the next step is gonna to be to break these exercises up into day one, day two, push-pull sets, mix in some band work. I'm gonna need some assistance, but Hopefully with 30 days, I can make a lot of improvement with the exercise I just did. On day one, it's pull workouts. These are the back and bicep exercises, beginning with three sets of pull-ups, followed by body weight rows and arm curls on the rings. I mix in a few exercises with the bands to reactivate certain areas at the end of my workouts as well. Also, if you wanna get started with rings or band workouts yourself, all the gear I'm using is available through the link in our description with a code for 10% off. For push days, it's triceps, chest, and a little bit of shoulders. I warm up with the support hold. The goal on this exercise is to get my palms to face out. Doing this engages my biceps as well, so I eventually decided to move this hold to day one workouts instead, but I follow this up with dips, then push-ups and butterflies. Again, I'm using bands at the end to do some tricep pull-downs, and when I'm at the park, I like to add some straight bar dips as well. I found the first week of these workouts to be absolutely exhausting, with muscles all through my back and shoulders feeling wiped out two days after a workout. This is totally different from weightlifting. Also, my forearms got pretty bruised from doing the support holds for 30 seconds at a time, so that was fun. Whenever I try new fitness goals for this channel, there's always so much that I don't know going in, and I'm absolutely certain that's true of the rings. In fact, there are exercises I'm almost certain I'm not doing properly, while struggling to pinpoint what these mistakes actually are, so I've made an appointment to meet with fitness trainer Rula Fahim to see where I'm making my mistakes and how to progress over the next three weeks. So the last thing I wanna go over as we're getting into uh, finishing our warm-up is priming the false grip hold. Now again, false grip hold is fundamental for any advanced level ring-based exercises. So what you're gonna start off is you're gonna get a, create a V-shape through your palm. You're gonna allow that ring to fall through that uh, V-shape. And by the time it falls through, that ring is gonna go through the meaty cushions of your palm. As you're gonna roll over now, you're gonna wrap your fingers around, your knuckles are gonna face forward and your fingers are gonna face to the left. As I drop down, I'm gonna keep that wrist in that same position. And now if you look at the alignment of my forearm with the alignment of the rings, it should be a pretty neutral position. There you go. So Brandon, when you were doing it, although you elsed it, you would pull up you would get stuck here and then you go. So you don't actually get that full extension through here. So the first thing I want you to do as you get into the motion, you wanna depress your shoulder. Good, keep those shoulders away from the ears. One thing I would really wanna make clear is that with ring-based exercises, go for longevity, do not go until failure. Because since it requires so much stability from the shoulder, those smaller muscles will fatigue first rather than the bigger muscles like let's say your lats or triceps, meaning that when you do your reps, I want you to kind of cut it off two or three reps in the tank. Good, I would probably rest right now. Okay. While my session with Rula went really well, it significantly changed my approach for the final two weeks of training. Rula recommended I give up working on the tucked front lever with the rings and just work on eccentric training using a pull-up bar, as trying this on the rings too early only makes the work more difficult. Second, he recommended I avoid training until failure with the rings 
Instead, the goal is to stick with more sets of three reps for dips and pull-ups specifically, paying close attention to my technique and the muscle groups I'm activating with each exercise. If I still have more in the tank after five sets of three, I'll lower the rings to do assisted dips with more reps or on a straight bench where the movement's controlled. And for pull-ups, I'll attach a kettlebell to my workout belt so I can do weighted pull-ups on a straight bar. This is a more controlled range of motion and means I can safely push myself to failure without the same risk. On pull days, I'm also working in time to continue training my wrist strength for the false grip, as it will only become more important as I try to move on to more intermediate exercises like the rings muscle up. And I try to keep the false grip through my pull-ups, bicep curls, and body weight rows. The other major technique note I'm trying to work on is keeping my shoulders dropped for every push and pull exercise. As I get tired through my workouts, I tend to pull my shoulders up, which shifts the muscle groups I'm engaging, and this was a major reason it took me so freaking long to learn the muscle up when I attempted that last year. While training without going to failure has really helped me lock in my technique and focus on activating each muscle group through the exercise, it also means I need to rethink the way I'm going to measure my progress on day 30. So I decided I should look at how training on the rings has improved my performance on other bodyweight exercises, specifically pull-ups, dips, and push-ups. Before taking on this challenge, I had basically plateaued in my pull-ups with a max of eight or nine reps. I could not get 10 in a row, despite working on it two to three times a week and using resistance bands to try and improve my muscle endurance at the end of my workouts. No improvement. For dips, it's a little harder to measure as the last time I was training consistently with dips was before lockdown. So I had to look at my pre-pandemic footage to see how many I was doing then. Usually they were sets of 12, but with a lot of reps where I was leaning too far forward or bringing my shoulders up, which again compromises the form. So I have to guess, back then I probably could have done 10 or 12 reps but again, that's a guess. So we were able to make an appointment to work out at an office gym to see how much I've improved after 30 days on the rings. I take 15 minutes to warm up my shoulders, chest, and back, and then it's time to see if 30 days on the rings has actually improved my overall upper body strength. My first test is with pull-ups. This time, I fall just shy of 12 consecutive reps. The dips, I try to remain intentional with my form, following the exercise through a complete range of motion. And on that level, this is already improvement from where I was just 30 days earlier. That was 15, right? 16? The push-ups I expect will be the hardest as I'm measuring those last and the number I'll need to beat is 30. This time I fail on push-up number 29. Oh. Ow. So I improved by two reps on pull-ups and what I think would be a four rep improvement on dips after 30 days of beginner rings training. As happy as I am with these numbers, I think the most notable improvement really is my control and balance on the rings themselves. When I compare where I was just three weeks ago to the point I'm at today, I have far better control over my movement, the reps I'm doing are clean, and I'm activating a full range of mobility with each rep. I think working on this challenge really taught me the value of being patient with my workouts. Rather than charging it forward with more reps and weights, the goal was just to focus on technique and engagement, and doing that actually improved my reps in the pull-ups, which is something I've been stuck at for months. My next goal with the rings will be to learn the ring muscle up, and hopefully that is a video I can share in early 2021. I wanna say thank you to everyone who's been watching through this truly insane year. I hope you guys stay safe through the holidays, 
And even though 2021 isn't gonna be like a flip of a switch, I hope as time progresses, you all have a much, much better year than the one we just had. Thank you for watching, and I wanna thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. If you ever wish you could read more books but don't find you have the time, then you should check out Blinkist. Blinkist takes nonfiction books and condenses them down into digestible 15 minute segments that you can read or listen to while on the go. I find Blinkist great for checking out books I'm curious about, but I'm not necessarily gonna buy and read the whole thing. For example, Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers is a book I've been curious about for a while, and through Blinkist, I was able to read the main takeaways while I was having my morning coffee. Sometimes exploring a book on Blinkist gets me excited enough to go out and read the full thing, while other times I'm just happy to have picked up the key takeaways. You can find over 3,000 nonfiction titles on the app from authors like Cal Newport, Tim Ferriss, and David Goggins. I know Blinkist has been a big help for me, so I definitely recommend you check it out for yourself. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash goalguys are going to get unlimited access for a week to try it out, and you'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership and the benefits that come with it. Again, go to Blinkist.com slash goalguys and explore the best titles in nonfiction, conveniently made accessible in 15 minutes or less. Thanks for watching.